Let strength be granted so the world might be mended, so the world might be mended. All right, we're back. And we've been sufficiently talkative. So and I thought I weren't going to be able to record it anymore this evening, but after me and Tommy enjoyed taco times, he decided to reti retire to his chambers to engage in a little World of Warcraft. Perhaps you've heard of it. God, that game used to be so big. I remember when everyone I knew, including me, <laughs> was playing that game, son. What a time. What a time it was. It's still sad. I'm glad I haven't lost that satisfying feeling whenever I obliterate someone with this sword. I'm telling you. Finding this regal-ass fucking jacket and this uh, <laughs> magic-ass sword has really turned things around for the Earl of Cloves. It's almost like he made some sort of Faustian bargain with a dark power to obtain such fortune. And to get Soldier of Fortune early. Because, I mean, computers haven't even been invented yet. So he's getting that fucking video game pretty fucking early. I don't even know what he's going to play it on. I remember when that game came out. And uh, a friend of mine had an actual gaming PC. Or I guess what would be considered a gaming PC at the time. And showed it to me. Showed me like the first couple of levels of it. And they were, I thought it was fucking amazing. <laughs> if you go and looked at that game now, you'd be like, really? But it's true. Can you not parry a halberd? I mean, I, I'm behind that because I think halberds are neat. But at the moment, it's pissing me off. I just realized our moon grass capped out at 25. I guess you can't carry 99 of all the grasses anymore. Ugh. I'd call it casualization, but it's literally the opposite of that. It's hardcoreization. I just want to obliterate more of the furniture because it's so satisfying. I suppose shooting it with magic does the same thing. I've probably been doing it the whole playthrough and just not noticed. Like, I'm sure y'all, if you went back now, there'd be a best montage. I'm individually obliterating the objects. This is amazing. It's so much better. If this was Skyrim, I'd go near that table and cheese wedges and goblets would shoot off in all directions and the game would crash. Hey, sweetheart, you look like the kind of man needs to be a parian. And I would love to be the guy to get that to you, but I've got to get good at the game. Pardon me a moment as I get good at the game. As such. I hope they never, like, fix, quote-unquote, fix that animation. <laughs> like, obliterating them, their very existence like that is very satisfying, I think. Oh, I see you down there, sir. Don't forget, just because I've got a big magic sword doesn't mean I'm not a magic boy at heart. You think I've forgotten, son? Acting like I don't have a sorcery callus. <laughs> Why do you think I sold them all? Okay. I wonder if the Google YouTube auto translate <laughs> will be able to determine that I said the word catalyst during that. Because some odd combination of syllables erupted from my mouth. Son, motherfuckers act like they forgot about Earl Cloves. Motherfuckers act like they forgot about clothes. I wanted to see if I could obliterate the individual weapons. What would you call what we're wearing anyway? I guess it's just like a long coat with a vest. I almost wanted to say gambeson, but it couldn't possibly be. Mainly because I don't actually... My only exposure to the word gambeson is in Final Fantasy XI. It was a piece of gear that I thought looked really cool. Went nice with my Red Mage AF hot pants. If your Red Mage AF uh, leggings in Final Fantasy XI didn't look like hot pants, it means you picked the wrong starting race. 
Oh my god, boys. You had a spear in everything. How did you let this happen? How did you let me kill you? Right then, when I was locked onto his, like, disappearing corpse, and you saw Earl of Clothes run around like that, that's kind of what happened that one time that the Flame Lurker killed me. It's unjust. <laughs> Fuss. Hashtag redeemed, son. This is so great. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad they did this. This is a good change. I can't imagine it's like this in the original game. Miyazaki would be like, why are we wasting resources on this whimsy? We should be putting more pain in the ass skeletons into the game. I was watching episode two of this playthrough as I was editing it earlier today, and I was re-getting mad at those fucking skeletons in the Shrine of Storms. Birds. Birds! I, I thought maybe I could obliterate them. That would be Earl of Clothes if he was in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. That lady would be there in that phone booth screaming and he'd come up there just swinging his magic sword around. And I imagine getting killed fairly quickly. Because even with a magic sword like this, I don't know if you can fight tens of thousands of birds. When there's just a nice little gazebo here. This isn't a gazebo, idiot. It's a nook. You thought you would escape? Good times. I'm addicted. <laughs> I'm addicted. I'm going to be on my strange obsession and it's going to be about this one specific thing and the producer of that show is going to be like, how are we going to make an episode out of this? This man, identified by his online handle Tenfei, is addicted to obliterating decorative objects in the Demon Souls remake with the Great Sword of Moonlight. I don't think The Strange Obsession is hosted by a stereotypical British presenter, but it should be. I wouldn't agree to do the show unless they like temporarily hired one. Get Charlie Broker in there to sit on a couch and smugly berate me before he goes off to write another terrible episode of Black Mirror. Hey, I found you, son. You thought you were safe. I want to get him down. To where we could parry him once and obliterate his soul. I don't want to do it twice. Oh yeah, we really should auto let Astrava in here. Uh, because he's being chased by Red Eye Knights. And this way if we die, we don't have to run through the whole level again. We can just come back here. Don't worry buddy, I got you son. I got a magic sword. I could do whatever the hell I want. I want to backstab them, but they both live in a fucking magic hallway that's called a portcullis. Good God, you crowd do too much fucking damage when you stab. Strava's around there hiding behind the corner. God bless his heart. Damn, we're at the point where the, the late moon grass doesn't full heal us. Times are tough. I was so sure that I properly parried him right then that I went ahead and pressed R1. Don't catch your parries before they repost, as the saying goes. Okay. I could have just fought them <laughs> sensibly and normally, but my romantic notion of parrying must be satiated. So the, the, the Duke of Clothes, the Duke, I keep calling him that. The Earl of Clothes. Son, he's a romantic at heart. He's like Don Quixote. Cool, we got rid of one of them punk soldiers. I'm not as <laughs> worried about parrying the punk soldiers. I mean, I like doing it. Parried on the stairs. Okay, champ, you got one fucking good hit on me. But uh, that's all you ever got. That's all you'll ever be. All right, you're too fucking chunky to be walking up the stairs. But, okay, there we go. Well, I didn't even fucking hit nothing. Excuse me, I was about to say, where's the corner of this stairs? All right, buddy. Let's fight. Let's tussle. Let's parry incorrectly. It's a good combination.
Ooh. Ah. And might I add? Uh. Yes, sir, boys. Hey, Slim. It's just me and you now. Oh. No, man, I got, like, dinged against the wall, and I, I didn't get the repost. Talk about unsatisfying. I figured we'd see if that could be parried or not. It was worth it. It was worth the experiment. Might as well take this full moon grass. Oh, Estrava came up to help me. Wasn't that nice? Let me show you how you fight these fucking things, dude. It's real easy. Stop provoking him into doing the bad attack. Well, you just took that in the fucking jaw like a champ, didn't you? Oh, man. I, I want to parry that. It'll be so cool. Strava, don't get fucking killed. Fine, I'll backstab him. God. You're lucky he was holding me back. There's our new official hat. Don't run off. You were having such a good time helping me. I can't believe he came up there and helped us. I didn't think he would do that. God bless his heart. You saved my life. This is the third time. This is all I have. Now I must go. Pure clear stone. That's that good shit. You know the prince is going to have that good shit. I thought he was just going to go stand in that corner like the Blair Witch Project. Father, the king awaits me. I see. All right. Yeah, let's put on our new fucking hat, boys. Let's be stylish. Our max AMP will go down, but we're not really magic, boys. Hell yes, yeah, son. Earl of Clove's final form has finally been obtained. Son. We're just a hobnobbing around town. Did we pick up the keys that we need? I think we did. With this fat official's hat, we can get up in the top of the tower where uh, Yuria the witch is. But we do need the key to get to her. And if we've gone through the whole area, then we should have at some point picked up the key to open this door back here in the previous level. Son, not only is Demon's Souls secretly a survival horror game, it's also secretly a Metroidvania. Hey, Slim. Good fucking work, buddy. I love that it leaves their drop suspended in the air, too. Everything about that delights the shit out of me. Iron key ring. I figured we had something like that. Hey, deal weed. Come over here and fight me. Without your crossbowmen. Really? Huh, I couldn't carry... Oh... It's because I have 25. Okay, so it's not that I couldn't bear the weight of two additional blades of grass. It's the fact that uh, you're only allowed to carry so many. I mean, that makes it more like the later, like Dark Souls 3. Uh, like you can only carry like 20 fire bombs at a time and such. There's a fan official down here lurking about with malice in his heart. There he is. Alright, this time we're going to do... We're going to do things proper. We're going to get... Uh, I rolled into his fucking attack. That's how proper I am. I want to get him where he can be parried once. And then killed. I roll... I, I'm holding the button down to run. And it made me roll like 12 fucking times. I was going to say that, that shouldn't kill him. But it'll get him just right. Right for the plucking. So, uh, Satan's down there licking his lips waiting for me to send this motherfucker to him. Huh. Maybe you can't try a parry a power attack like that. Who could say? Limit breakers, man. Good, I suppose. Yeah. 
It is a shame to get all this. Oh, the Miyazaki's Edge. Why ain't you a good boy? Okay. Damn, how many new moon grasses can you carry that I can't pick up an O10? That's because it's also that good shit. It doesn't cure your status, but it does heal you all the way up. In fact, I think we should put it down here. It'll be an emergency item. I'm not really planning on getting poisoned <laughs> anytime soon. So we'll just leave that be. Let's say I know I picked up some black pine resin at some point. We'd only really use that with our spear now. Patches would love to have that thing, I bet. This is technically supposed to be like one of the last areas you visit in the game. But we've become powerful enough now that it doesn't matter. Valorfax of the Twin Fangs? Is that his name? One of them in the opening cutscene. They talk about how he was the only one that got out of here and went to the outside world and he was like, man, things about Terry are super fucked. Place. And then everybody was like, well, we gotta go there and be cool. And then there's this guy. Who goes there? Oh, you killed that blooded sluggard for me. I'm called Bjor, the elder of the twin fangs of Boletaria. You deserve a handsome reward. But may I have none? <laughs> <laughs> Good one ahead. I shall sleep a while. Okay, so he's Bior, that's right. So Valorfax of the Twin Fangs is the one that got the hell out of here. I guess you never actually see him. <laughs> They're like, I ain't going fucking back there. I promised everybody that I would tell people how fucked things are. But I didn't say my ass was coming back. I do also appreciate that, uh, this is, I've already been down here, haven't I? And that's where I fought that fat fish. Yeah. Um, I appreciate how you let him out of that jail cell and he doesn't even walk out. He's just like, I'm too fucking tired to leave this jail cell. Just leave me to die. I'm assuming he inspired, uh, Onion Bro. Sig. Uh, Meyer and Sigward or Siegfried or whatever from Dark Souls and Dark Souls 3 in Dark Souls 3 he even fucking passes out from time to time just like Bior did right there and they oh they but he has like the same boisterous type of voice to yeah I'm gonna go ahead and call it a direct homage did I beat Vaddy to it Oh yeah, we had, had intentions to kill this fucking dragon uh, way back, didn't we? There's really no straightforward way to go about it. You can, like, poison him. But, uh, other than that, you could try to slowly fucking magic him to death. We wouldn't really get much from it. You get his soul, which I guess can be turned into some kind of item or something, but... Oh yeah, speaking of which... I still want to upgrade this damn sword. Let's go free... Uria, the witch. And then we'll head back to the Nexus. Way back when I was in Lava Town, before I started messing with patches and shit... I was, uh, or maybe after, I don't remember. I just know I was in that part of the, the level. I was talking about how I find it very relaxing when you're listening or watching video game footage and it's a part with, like, no music and the character's just running and you just hear their footsteps. And I was talking about there's a YouTuber called Kid Guru who his whole thing is he just shows Easter eggs and references in, like, video games. Like, he'll usually do whatever the newest, like, AAA game everybody's all hyped about is. And... He doesn't talk. He just does uh, text on the screen. And it almost always results in sh him showing a game where he's just silently running around the game world and you can just like hear the ambient noise. And I find it very relaxing. 
it may be an odd thing to go on about during your YouTube rebuild, your professional YouTube playthrough of the Demon Souls remaster, but I went for it. I chose the banter less spoken. We're dressed up to the nine, son, I'm telling you. We could go straight from killing this crowd to the Galabaw, and nobody would bat an eyebrow. And even if they thought to bat an eyebrow, they'd know better. So aren't the Earl of fucking close? Okay, we finally met something I couldn't banish. Hey guys, look at my cool hat. I'm also morbidly obese and a huge shit heel. Please lower the ladder for me. I'm like Calvin trying to get Hobbs to lower the rope to let him up into the gross uh, tree fort. Am I not? Do I have to have the whole set on? Oh, good God. We'll just have to come back. Let's just use an archstone shard. I'm sure I've got plenty of them. I have one, really? Damn, if these things ain't rare, I need to learn that miracle that lets you uh, basically homeward bone. Evacuate, I think it was called. I think I've got enough souls, wasn't it? 20,000? Let's go see a miracle man. You there. I can sense it. You can hear the voice of God. And you are my Voice. Wow, she gave me the pure faint stone I talked about earlier. That would let me max out that blessed mace, I believe. Yeah, evacuate. I'm definitely going to get that. Boom. All right. Cool, cool, cool. A miracle is a heavenly act, but spells are the acts of demons. God, this crowd is perfectly representative of the modern state of society because they're like we cast miracles they're not like those filthy shitty soul arts and you go over here and they're like we cast soul arts because we're intelligent and those assholes over there always fucking talk about going to church and shit casting their shitty miracles i wouldn't wipe my ass with well spoilers you find out if you do enough shit in the game that they literally come from the same source the old one it is also the god they worship so it's like that episode of Community where there are uh, Britta and Jeff keep arguing about what bar to go to and calling each other's choice like <laughs> super like hipstery and like all this shit. And then it turns out they were talking about the same bar. That's the spoiler. Well, hey, buddy, you came back to the Nexus. I didn't notice they gave him a moustache. Our great king was a magnanimous leader. He was stolid, spirited, caring of his subjects. He felt the seditious claims that our lord, that must be it. Uh, son. My brother in arms, Vanifax of the Twin Fangs, and like myself, he was the master of more dark times of the Four Realms than no one could have. Boys, that guy thinks too much of the fucking king. I have it on good authority. The king's huge asshole. Spoilers, his son sitting up there. You can ask him. Look how fucking sad he is sitting up there, waiting for King Alot to come pick him up from soccer. It's tragic, is what it is. Um. Oh yeah, we need that. Uh, the, the official set. I'm keeping a close watch. So let's. Okay, we can put those away. These weigh point seven. So how much do the officials gloves weigh? One point two. I was gonna say we could just carry these around as our lighter gloves instead of having this uh, black leather stuff. Yeah, and you have an inability to come up with a new catchphrase. I'm going to do it every time. I'm going to hit R1 or L1. Oh, God. I mean, honestly, if we wanted to be more period accurate, we should probably wear these. Because, I mean, these big poofy pantaloons, they match our jacket. But, nah, the Earl of Clothes, he's too hard and son. He knows that you got to have metal leggings and metal gauntlets.
I always assumed the logic behind the fact that in the original you only need the fat official's cap. Uh, besides the fact that it was the only piece, like all these other pieces of gear for this set are new for this remake. Like the original didn't have a fat official set. But uh, I just assumed that the reason you only needed the hat was because the guys were up above you. So when they looked down, they just saw the hat. I believe I'm running in towards a dead end. Is it true? Yes. As long as no sneaky ninja boys fall down behind me, we'll be all right. Well, look who was a good boy and followed me all the way here and waited at the bus stop every day for me to come back so they could bite me on the cheek of the ass. And they made a statue of him in Japan. What a good boy. I'm taking out my frustrations by obliterating the scenery. That's how Earl of Gloves plays the popular prop hunt Gary's Mod game. Where everybody is an object in the environment and you've got to like hide yourself. I've never actually played it, but I know about it. <laughs> but when Earl of Cloves shows up, he just starts obliterating all the background scenery. He takes no prisoners. Look, I'm dressed to the nines. May I come upstairs? Fat tits, fat tits, <laughs> let down your stairs. So I may stab you in the derriere. Alright, we'll do that. We'll hit him with a solid R2. Maybe another one. And now we can parry it. And Yuria the Witch will think we're super fucking cool, dude. I tell you what, she's gonna be impressed. We should have parried that attack, but what can you do? I keep going for it. I keep wanting to see if you can actually parry that overhead attack. That was the, the one we wanted. I'm very nervous that I'm gonna shit the man in front of this cool witch lady. He'll notice is a human woman. Going completely against my fucking standards and requirements for witch ladies. I only partially, partially parried that last one is why I didn't get the repost, in case you're wondering. I didn't bother throwing a fit because I actually knew why it happened. Well, ain't you just got a secret attack you love to do over and over? Enough of this show voting nonsense. <laughs> we got a trophy. Hey, Tommy's controller, can you hear me? We got a trophy. And also, penis. Penis! I hope Kazurai's ghost could hear that. Hey, lady. What do you want with me? Have you brutes no mercy? Do as you wish. There are no secrets here. She thinks just because I'm dressed like this. Did you notice I'm not morbidly obese? And laughing at my own joke. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I laugh. I'm literally laughing at my own joke right now. That's the Tidfay experience. Heavens, you, you, you. Thank you. With a little rest, I can soon. Your pantyhose got tore up. That's terrible. I'd buy you some more, but the guy from Death of a Salesman spent them and then kills himself at the end. I think is how that movie ends. Spoilers or play. I do not wish to. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Rescued Yuria the witch. Hope she's not a huge bitch. Spoiler, she's not. She's very polite. She's like, I'll teach you powerful magics. And you're like, why, thank you. And then we both amicably nod to each other. Son. She's so polite that we both followed each other on ye old Facebook and then just both immediately muted each other because we didn't actually care what the other one was talking about. We were just putting on airs. God, imagine if social media had somehow existed during these ye old times. You know the dukes and duchesses and earls and barons and meisters would be fucking shit talking to each other non-stop. There'd be no end to it. It kind of happens nowadays because the, the modern day royalty or nobles are the fucking celebrities and shit that people mindlessly worship and all they do is talk shit on twitter and somehow they i don't know <laughs> i don't know how to justify it
Cool beans. Back at the Nexus. She usually hangs out over here in her own cool corner. Hello again. I am sorry. For but should you have demon soul? Only my witchcraft. Why not try the magic of the great sage? Oh yeah, I was supposed to rescue Sage Frank. I completely forgot. Are you certain you wish to learn? It would honor me to assist. Are you sure? All right. Ignite and Firestorm. Firestorm would be nice, but I can't possibly meet the uh, requirements for it. And I don't think I have that much magic memory anyway. I owe my life. To if you are ever in need of it is a dark art. Didn't I turn on like dialogue boosting? Why is everyone so fucking quiet? Yeah, it's on. Huh. It is what it is. Hey, oh, you're still wearing that, ye old last season's fashion. How passe. How quaint to see how the common folk dress. All right, well, I reckon I owe it to Sage Frank to get him out of that fucking prison cell. God bless his heart. Patches, you son of a bitch. I want the half moon grass. Half in the moon grass. Fucking, <laughs> fucking hacks can't finish a Demon Souls playthrough. Okay, let's remember how to get the Sage Freak. I spoilers, I didn't look it up after the last time I was here, like I planned on doing, so that I could come here and be like, "Oh, I always knew where he was." Uh, this. Buckler won't do us much good here because I don't believe you can parry the squid head guys because they don't really come running at you and just like swing a weapon. So I guess we'll go back to using the heater shield. He equipped a heater shield. She said see you beat her shield. And he didn't know what that fucking meant. Okay. Hey. These guys are probably somewhat resilient to magic, being magic squid boys themselves, but the Moonlight Great Sword is still enough to overwhelm them. They're delicate arthropodic sense, but I still think arthropods are like. I'm confusing arthropods and crustaceans. It happens to everybody, it happens to the best of us. You know, I never got the Ring of Magical Sharpness here. I guess it was in one of the cells I didn't bother going in. I forgot you were here too. What was it? She sold the Ring of Avarice, and it was like, yeah, there's a hole in the floor. And it was, uh, like 50,000 souls or something like that. It's the kind of thing you want to, like, save up and invest in early. Just like in real life. Spoilers, I didn't do that. Because I didn't know. And also, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, good God. And there he is. I guarantee I walked by that 20 times <laughs> when I was randomly flailing about last time. But in my defense, I thought Tommy was going to run in here and just grab the PS5 and rip it cords and all <laughs> out of the wall and the TV and go running out the room. Hold on, Sage Freak. There's a, a motherfucker who thinks he can beat me in a magic duel. I like how we're both using these little fence posts as the best cover. So I, now that's another genre Demon Souls is. It's a fucking cover shooter, just like Gears of War. I'm telling you, Demon Souls is every genre of video games. I should make a YouTube video called Demon Souls is every genre of video games and do it like one of those video essays that the cool kids do. If I wasn't like... If I didn't know how much fucking editing it would require, I would try to do it. I keep getting in just the right spot to be fucking cock blocked by these things. To be magic blocked. 
the fresh spice, sir. Yeah, boys! Did you see that sage break? I just look back and he's just weeping openly at seeing magic, his beloved magic being <laughs> reduced to such frivolous nonsense. Magnificent. I never expected I might escape alive. My name is Frick. I thought to claim a demon soul or two. I have been enfeebled by my long imprisonment, but I can still move my life. I thank the stars. I owe you my life. We did it, Tommy. We saved Sage Freak. And also, anuses. Anuses! I have been enfeebled by my long imprisonment. I can still what do you think the odds are Tommy ever watches these little trophy videos and, <laughs> and hears the recordings? Okay. Cool. Sage Freak's been saved. So, everything's coming up Earl of Cloves. Oh no, I obliterated the fart sifter. I've decided that that's what those are called. It's canon now. If Vaddy doesn't have a two-part hour-long series on those things and them being called fart sifters, we'll know that he's a hack fraud, son. Oh god, the tacos are coming back. Boys, the tacos Tommy made were fantastic. Here's his secret recipe. He buys the old El Paso like Doritos. They're they're not they're basically like the nacho cheese Dorito taco shells from Taco Bell, but they're the old El Paso brand. And they're also the extra wide ones with the flat bottom so they like set upright on a plate and you could put an ass load of ground beef and cheese in them. And then spoilers, he cooks an ass load of ground beef and buys a big bag of cheese. And that's pretty much it. Luckily, I hoarded a bunch of Taco Bell fire sauce packets that I had that I could put on mine. Tommy's not much of a sauce man, so he doesn't he doesn't buy sauce when he buys taco mats. The reason I have so many of those fucking things is something happened at Taco Bell because I remember a few years ago you'd go there and order like the big box of ten tacos and like you'd beg and plead for a fire sauce. This is in the drive thru where you're not allowed to just grab your own handful. And they'd put like three packs in the bag. <laughs> it was their own personal way. It's like leaving a penny as a tip. It was a way of saying fuck you. But now you go there and you order one chalupa and when you get up to the window, the guy has a fucking steam coal shovel he's shoveling packets out the window into your car so i'm fucking drowning in them and you can't throw them away the waste so that's my anecdote did i mention how poorly the banter has been going lately okay oh sage frank is here let's go say hey to him oh boy no we'll take the cool entrance where you just fall over here boom don't fall on him or he gets real iffy with you I have a proposal for you. Could you bring your demon souls to me? As I determine more about the demon soul, is you have your wits about you. All right, what do you want to teach me? Flame toss? Ain't a bad spell. It's what magicians start with. Because magicians start with a lot of the same gear as a royalty, like the same set of armor. But uh, they start with a wooden catalyst, which, like I said, has higher magic damage, but doesn't raise your max MP. And they start with flame toss. And instead of the fragrant ring, they just start with a bunch of spices. Protection. Poison cloud. Death cloud, of course, being much more useful. A fireball would be fun to just shoot. But what can you do? So do you not... There must not be an intelligence requirement to learn these those spells. Is, is that how it works? Or do spells in this game just not have a, an intelligence requirement? They just have an MP cost you have to meet. Huh. Soul Ray is what we're casting right now, isn't it? I am fully, I can still do is that the name of our magic spell? I honestly can't remember. Our magic, here they are. It, no, we have Soul Arrow. Huh, I wonder if that one's better. Oh well, it's not like it fucking matters. So what do we want to do now? Oh, uh, I keep forgetting to try to upgrade this damn sword. 
That's the that's the uh, downside to being able to teleport around so freely is that like <laughs> we've got so many choices of what to do. We're paralyzed by it. We keep wandering in all directions. Mm. We gotta go see Skivir to Wanderer and show him the Dragon Bone Smasher too. I mean, we don't have to. He just gives you some upgrade stone that we don't really need. But I mean, it would be fun, I guess. Like everything got these like a serious. Go back. I like the way the buckler looks. I like the aesthetics. Also, get these useless straggling shields out of my inventory. They ain't even worth giving the stockpile, Thomas. I wouldn't solely his the integrity of his hoarder stash with them. Hoo-hoo! I'm feeling real bold and sassy. Like the Earl of Clothes ought to. Alright, sir. I wish to commission you to make my sword more better. I thought, when is it gonna, like, ask me to give him the Red Hot Demon Soul? Oh, they changed this name to the Searing Demon Soul. Well, that's disheartening, son. I like the Red Hot Demon Soul. It made me think of Beautiful Joe. Tommy, I gave him the Red Hot Demon Soul, but they changed the name of it. Also, Cocks and Balls. Cocks and Balls! I don't know how long it records. Okay, let's see here. So... It's going from plus 98 magical attack to plus 103. That's an improvement. Oh, and the, the scaling goes from A to S. Well, isn't that nice? Okay, we need five colorless demon souls to max this thing out. Well done. And I know where one happens to be awaiting for us. Uh, one way to get them is to kill primeval demons, but primeval demons only appear in worlds that are either pure black world tendency or just a smidge less than pure black world tendency. And killing them like shoots it back up towards white world tendency and I guess generally gets you closer to neutral. And there was a certain area where we threw ourselves off a ledge repeatedly <laughs> while bitching and moaning that we converted to pure black. And it was Elantria. So there is a primeval demon here. Spoilers, they're real unpleasant. They're not really a thing like you fight. They're just a thing you like mercy kill, almost. They're like a bloated leech. The, uh, if you've played Dark Souls and you remember where the uh, power within pyromancy is down in Blighttown, there's that big fucking tick thing hanging on the wall. They're kind of like that. I figured I'd prepare you all for the horror that awaits. Yeah, boys! It feels good to be powerful. I see why humans lust for power so greatly, because it feels real good. Damn, it feels good to be a magic gangster. I should have looked up where we can get more faint stone uh, so we could get this mace maxed out and have some nice constant regeneration. There's some items down here we can grab too because we made that heart fall down. There's going to be some of them John Carpenter's silver fish monsters. So we're real good at obliterating them. Oh, excuse me. I was supposed to walk out here. Hey, buddy. You just look fucking awful. But don't worry. <laughs> Everybody's equally horrific looking in hell, and that's why I sent you. It's so much more satisfying doing this than rolling into them, breaking them, because like nothing remains. You make the level so clear. If I was one of the developers on this game, I'd have put a cool like Easter egg in one of the levels if you managed to go through it and like obliterate every piece of background scenery like that. And everybody would be like, that's real cool and my favorite part of the game. And whoever did that part should get a fucking raise. Uh, 
Oh yeah, they always drop an unknown warrior soul. We discovered that earlier. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you just came on rushing up on me and I don't appreciate it. Like the fucking power drill massacre. Solaro, oh, Solaro, ah, uh, huh? He's like trying to goad me into, you know what? He's doing the same thing a player would do. Like if I was <laughs> wanting an enemy to come rushing at me, I like run up to them and then like back up. Son, we were being kited by the AI. So here's that big fucking heart that we made fall down. We didn't even have the jump rope for it either. You crowd sound like you're having a real fucking good time. An EP rapier. I thought it was an EV rapier. So that's a rapier that you can apply any kind of elemental buff to. And it evolves its form. For those of you not familiar, that's not a real thing. The ring of Avarice is just down here for free. <laughs> well, I was thinking about buying one. Well, let's take our Regenerator's Ring off and put the Ring of Avarice on. In a true display of Avarice. I appreciate that there are things, those things corpses don't remain either when they've been properly obliterated by the Moonlight Great Sword. This sword appears in like all of the Frontsoft games, including all the Souls games. Not Sekiro, but I don't really consider Sekiro a Souls game. It's more of an action ninja game with Souls trappings. In that one, it uses your silver bullets to do like the uh, ranged attack. Because you don't got magic in Bloodborne. All you've got are bullets. The magic of bullets. It'd be a good name for a YouTube channel where they shoot guns. They're like, today on the magic of bullets, we're just going to shoot most fucking guns. It's going to be fucking sweet. If they could combine it with one of those YouTube channels that's just people uh, mowing lawns. Look one up sometime. If you ever want to just sit back and be relaxed, find one of those videos where somebody who does like lawn care or has, yeah, like a lawn trimming service is hired usually by like a city to cut a property that where the shit is like massively overgrown. And he, you know, go in there and it's the greatest fucking time. They get in these fucking big ass lawnmowers. They look like Ripley in the power later. Son. And they just go up to the shrubbery that's like threatening the, the, the client's uh, flower bed. <laughs> and they're like, get away from him, you bitch! And just punch that bush to death. True story. Or you could hire Link, the hero of the wild, to come and cut it with a katana. Boys, that's a callback to another Ten Face series. Can you imagine watching more than one Ten Face series? I assume each of you pick one Ten Face series and watch it, and then you're like, well, I'm done. I got my feel. You didn't do much with that Miyazaki's Edge, did you? You'll notice down there a corpse. Uh, the way you get it is you fall from up there, but I know in the original game it was super fucking finicky. Uh, I was uh, reminiscing about the original Demon Souls, and uh, you shot me with a crossbow bolt. And I'm just trying real hard to stay calm about that, but I'd appreciate it. If you just fucking died. Uh, anyway, the item that's laying down there is, you know, whenever we see a Strava and he has that weird dodecahedron shield and, like, elaborate sword? Uh, it's, it's those. They're laying over there. I don't really have any use for them, so why risk killing myself over and over? Hope nobody lands in front of me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oopsie poopsie. And all that was left was a spear. And then the Earl's, <laughs> then the Earl of Clove, 
obliterated their houses, leaving spears too small for all the Who's mouses. Yep, it was a hell of an ambush you two set up. I assume they were having some sort of rivalry or argument beforehand, and that's why they didn't really work together, and it got them killed. They were like the survivors in a zombie movie. I realized that my slice could reach him. <laughs> and once I realized my slice could reach him, I had to destroy him. He let out one last horrifying gasp before he disappeared into the nothing. I really am enjoying the snazzy get-up we have, one son. I'm telling you. This game would be real good for fashion souls, but there's not that many sets of armor in the original Demon Souls, even with the couple they've added. And some of them are gender-locked. So you can't even wear all of them. So I believe up there is where you would find the key to free Lord Rydal in perfect white world tendency. But we ain't got nothing to do with that. One more time we plunge into the swampy abyss. One more time we're thrust into the swamp ass abyss. I know I can't have my sword <laughs> breaking through. Clipping through the side of the cage. Your crowd's immersion will be just plummet. You'll be like, man, I was enjoying Ten Face Demon Souls Remaster until I saw that weapons clip through objects and then I just couldn't immerse myself in that world anymore. It all seems so fake afterwards. Including the nonsense that Ten Fei was spewing. Hey buddy. I want to see what you're like now that I've got this fucking weapon. You're real resilient to it, so I'm gonna leave you be. I just wanted to check in with you. I wonder why that thing's so fucking magic resistant. I mean, I know it shoots a soul arrow, but I could shoot a soul arrow and I don't consider myself particularly magic resistant. Who could say? I gotta remember where the damn <laughs> access ramp to the dock is. We did it, boys. We got out of the water. Which means we're cheating at Marco Polo. But we're being good at Demon Souls. The double. The double tap, son. What does this weapon do when you like roll and strike? He does like that kind of slash. If you back strike, he does like a running overhead. That's nice. We gotta remember that with some asshole mob is coming up and like stops the swing at us we can go hoo hoo the hoo hoo special he calls it not to be confused with the ho ho special they're very different and if you get them mixed up it'll get you fucking killed i guarantee it now the primeval demon spawns at a dead end off of one of these docks on one of these cliffs i haven't actually seen it with my eyes but i've seen the demon souls wiki and the words that were typed onto it. There he is right there. Looking real fucking pleasant. Good God. I was not prepared for that fucking thing. Somebody get Barney from How I Met Your Mother. To come here and tell me whether it's afraid or not. Second How I Met Your Mother <laughs> reference in this playthrough. That's odd. Son, the Ring of Plague Resistance. That's the ring you gotta wear when you're watching Eli the Plague of Gripes' Select Your Partner animation, son. It protects you against untoward poke boners. Okay, there's another colorless uh, demon soul. Did our world tendency immediately shift? Uh, oh, I think you have. Once the area reloads, we won't be in pure black anymore. So let's enjoy the pure black times while we can. We could go try to fight the man eaters now. I don't know if the world tendency affects the bosses, but in general, oh look, there's a uh, additional enemy that wouldn't be here if it wasn't in pure black. Neat. 
The World Tendency, like, it's a neat concept, but it's just so weird and awkward in implementation. I get a very Saga feel from it. Speaking of which, fucking Saga Frontier Remaster is coming out. I can't believe it. Somebody posted it on the uh, Discord, the Tenfei Discord to be precise, where people chatted up and are good friends. Man, I let that thing fucking punk me. I was too excited about the Saga Frontier Remaster that I got killed. Oh, I'd have never beat the Man Eaters anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, that, yeah, that was one of those games that I was like, boys, I can't wait till they remaster Saga Frontier, and then we'd all laugh because it would never happen. But it's happening. Who could have thought? I got to put the... I don't have to put the cling ring back on. I be could become a real boy whenever I want. I ain't Pinocchio. I ain't got to impress the blue elf, son. Ah, real boy. Form secured. I would like to go upgrade the sword one more time before I fight him, though. Just saying. The man-eaters are bona fide assholes. I'm hoping I've accidentally got too powerful and that I have an easy... Oh, God, Glutal Air. Time uh, fighting them. But it's probably not likely to happen. I want to be like TN and Dragon Ball Z abridged when, like, they're just beating the dog shit out of Androids 19 and 20. And he's like, do you think maybe we over-prepared for this? We all went three years just fighting and training and refusing to beat off. And everyone else is like, we didn't agree to that last fire. <laughs> and TN's like, god damn it. I'm the only one. He would be, too. He's the only one with the integrity. Okay. I believe we need it somewhere in the ballpark of 330 souls uh, to purchase an upgrade from this fine gentleman. <laughs> I did a pro strategy to get down the elevator. You could tell, I'm sure. I'm not a big fan of this inventory. I don't know. Something about it feels unintuitive. I think it's because when you pause, press start, it immediately brings this up. I don't know if the original was laid out like that. But I'm used to pausing in a Souls game and immediately having access you know, to this part of the inventory. It's just another unique way that I'm bad at the game. Alright, two of these should get us just enough. Hey, buddy boy. Boys, you just are a little feller, aren't you? Cool. So now we're going from plus 103 to plus 108. So upgrading this never actually raises its base magic damage. It just increases the faith multiplier. Son, it just channels more of George Michael's spirit into the sword. Before this river, there comes a moonlight greatsword. Before you throw my colorless demon saw back on the floor. I heard somebody chuckle. Was it just me? Who's in here chuckling in Shortland? I'm like the teacher when he pokes the door or she, he or she. When they poke their head back in the door. And I'm like, who's in here chortling? Y'all are supposed to be doing the, the, the sentences. Do the kids even write sentences anymore? Do the kids even write? Do the kids even learn? The answer to all of these is no. Okay. This is going to be a regulation by the book, running to the man-eater boss fight and killing them, son. Loose cannon antics are just not even an option. I'm going to put the regenerator, is the regenerator ring? Now they do cast magic spells, so the doll, this would make our magic spells do less damage, but we're not, it says at the expense of magic power. It can't, I don't think it means the damage we do with this Moonlight Greatsword, but I suppose it's worth a test. We'll save the old man from Limit Breakers to trouble. Test it ourselves. If only I had a suitable target to knock upside the head. I just, this crowd needs to learn a better fucking tactic. Okay, good. You noticed. Okay. Why well, you got to land way fucking over there? Alright, an R2 does 
Boom, 172. Roll off a cliff, Ben. It's uh, it's the professional way to play. Um, anyway, uh, our R2 will do... Uh, I did 172 to him. So now I'm going to equip the Ring of Magical Dullness. And we'll swing that shit and see what happens. Spoilers, this is that wasn't the professional by the fuck running to the man, eater and killing him. Son, this one is. That first one didn't count, that was dress rehearsal. Why does it fucking take to get you to fight me? Christ almighty! Alright. And now, yeah, of course, you've got the land way over there. It's a quote unquote strategy. We actually did 173. So, it didn't go down. It may have accidentally gone up. Don't forget that there is one of those damn squid head guys. I believe a red phantom version on the spiral staircase up to the boss. Because if you watched my Demon Souls stream I did earlier this year, where I played a uh, magic lady, I uh, had quite the time fighting the man eaters before I decided to just learn Firestorm <laughs> and and not have to try anymore. Or as I like to call it, the good times. I figure we might as well wait till we get to the boss before we uh, become real boys again. Where are you at? There you are. Just don't get paralyzed by him and you'll be fine, man. I rolled into the paralyzation, which means I deserve to die. Thank God. Thank God that happened. It's important to waste not only my time, but y'all's time by forcing you to watch me run back there again. We've reached that official point during the recording session where I'm getting tired and grumpy. Because it's 11... It, it turned 11 p.m. as I looked at the computer monitor. Tomorrow's Saturday, so Tommy doesn't have to work. But with any luck, Tommy doesn't get up till like at the bare minimum 1.30 p.m. on Saturdays. Like I'm not even exaggerating. And uh, even when he does, he'll probably have some dailies to do. So I tend to get up on a Saturday, to, you know, depending on how I feel. If I want to be a proper adult. I get up at like 8.30. That gives me enough time to go to the Piggly Wiggly for a bacon and cheese biscuit. And then when I get home and <laughs> eventually, I almost have to go back to bed because those things are decadent. But if I do get up that early, it should give me more than enough time to finish the game, right? Of course, it doesn't, you know, there's no rush. I've already recorded. The first episode of this hasn't gone live yet as of me recording this. So it's not like I don't have plenty of time. And there are more days where I'm off that uh, Tommy isn't. All right, that's what we should have done last time. Now, I don't like how you've got some kind of magic poise. Okay, if I die again, I died again. I tried to roll past him, but a wise man once said that a, uh, a soul's born enemy's greatest strength and ability to piss you off is the fact that you can't roll through their hitboxes. I need like... <laughs> I need like a fish bowl that I keep beside my chair with like little scraps of paper with like banter ideas written on it from when we reach this point. Like normally I would just try to roll past him but you know that, that I wouldn't be able to, and I'd go over to the side. And then all of y'all would collectively slap your foreheads at the same time. 
People don't really do that motion anymore. It was something you used to see a lot in movies. Like when characters were exasperated, they'd like slap their forehead. Or just slap like their palm to their forehead. I assume the face palm evolved from it. If there's any anthropologist in the comments, you know, leave a comment about it. And if there's any anthro ladies in the comments or uh, watching, feel free to leave a comment as well. All right. The shit lord on the stairs. Oh, I just noticed we have the power number of souls up in the top right, which means we can't lose. And he knows it. I hear your Cthulhu ass nonsense you're spewing. All right, R2s stagger them a little bit more. That's what we should have been doing all along. Once again, if I was a Disney Star Wars executive, I'd be like, why weren't we just spamming R2s? They should just make an R2-D2 movie, standalone. I mean, I wouldn't watch it because I don't give a shit about Star Wars anymore. But I'm sure the kids would. Ryan Johnson would sneak in there somehow and be like, spoilers, R2 died and he was a pedophile. Subversion! And he just jumps off the top of a building and <laughs> disappears into the fog below. Ah, oh, good times. They hit an item way around here. Specifically to waste your time. Eight aged spices. We might as well just switch to the aged spice as our default one. Oh, you can only carry four at a time. Well, damn. Well, I mean, we don't hardly ever fucking use them, so why save them? That's the adult. Now that I've become, like, older. Back in my youth... Like I, I, like everyone else, I hoarded all fucking items in video games. Scared to fucking death to dare ever use like a mega elixir or something. God forbid. But now that I'm older, I realize that that shit pisses me off. I've heard some popular internet boys refer to them as mind goblins. And they spoke about them with great fondness. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. You are just real fucking pretty. Uh, okay, he doesn't like getting hit with this sword, but he can also play through the pain. Your tail bites you! That's awful! These poor fucking things! I've got such sympathy for the man-eater! Son, <laughs> my least favorite Cowboy Bebop episode. Well, while you're being bit by your own fucking ass in, I'm gonna eat a grass. I'm trying to cut that thing off of him. I'm doing him a fucking favor. I've never seen one of these things be tormented by its own ass so much, son. No wonder that possum screamed at its own ass in that famous picture. <laughs> like, he played Demon Souls and he was like, I don't trust this fucking thing. The other possum was like, why the fucking thing? He's like, this! And the other possum was like, do you mean your ass? Beg pardon? And then to get out of this awkward conversation, he just pretended to be dead. It's possum's go to, son. Alright, so you're still a huge fucking pain in the ass to fight, but I am doing at least somewhat decent damage to you. I need to go ahead and learn fucking second chance so I can properly cheese the fucking game. I thought about switching over to two-handed and the uh, blessed mace, but he gave me a <laughs> fucking reality. He gave me a fucking wake-up call when he ran down here and just dashed the shit out of me. My hopes and dreams was the, one of the things he was dashing. You can't go two neck bones on these guys because they poise through the pain and they'll fucking dash through you like that. Okay, I see your good friends here. I see we've reached the part of the fight where you're no longer a mature, honorable adult and you have to call your boy in here. I hear a sinister violin in the background. Which one are you? Okay, you're the one I've already been tenderizing with. I knew he was doing his unfazable dash attack. You gotta be real careful when you roll away from these guys too if you're locked onto them. Because you'll fly off the edge and Miyazaki, he'll just fucking collapse laughing. They'll have to give him an oxygen tank plugged into his nose. And I got killed. Imagine that. 
fun. Fighting the man eaters is always fun, especially when you've got people, anonymous strangers on the internet, who can watch and judge you. It's the only thing that makes it better. All right, I'm going to try one more time before I officially get too mad and have to end the recording session. So luckily we are already over my general 10 faith threshold. As far as video length goes. Alright, I figured I'd see what your fucking attack you're always trying to do is. Spoilers, it's fucking terrible, just like you. If Bob Belcher were to describe the enemies in the Tower of Latria, he'd be like, terrible. They're all terrible. That's a show I like most of the time. It suffers from a syndrome that King of the Hill had, though, which is the plot of almost every episode just revolves around them introducing a new character or bringing back one that was created for this purpose in a previous episode, who's just like a super huge, unlikable douchebag. And the characters just have to struggle against them. And in the end, they don't really win. Uh, <laughs> they... Whew, I made myself sad thinking about Mom's Burgers. It happens to the best of us, son. All right, we got to get past the gatekeeper of the boss fight again. This fucking piece of shit. If you can get past this one funky gimmick-ass paralyze spell. Oh, of course, he's got that fucking AoE. And like most bullshit AoEs, it persists. He persists, Jerry. take this uh, off the bar because uh, we're not really going to cast any magic spells. If we do, it'll be like a soul arrow to hit one of them who's floating in the air and is like very close who has, to use the official term, a nat far to HP left. Alright, what should we do different this time? Uh, Just fucking get over it, I guess. That's what Miyazaki thinks. Get good, son. Mizaki has get tattooed across one set of knuckles and good on the other. I repeated a joke I made about the flame lurker, but it was about Hidetaka talking Miyazaki, so it counts as fresh material. I don't know if I should cut your tail off because it like helps me when it fucks you up. <laughs> the enemy, the ass of my enemy is my friend in this case. We just need to do one good overhead slam and then like get ready to dodge or block. We can't go too greedy. Oh god, you know Miyazaki was watching and begging and praying that that knocked me over the ledge. Okay, yeah, I see I shouldn't have attacked there. Eat the grass! Okay. Oh, I think that should have hit. That's just me. Okay, so your tail can shoot magic too. Tail magic, they call it. Ah, frustration. Whelms deep within me. His friend, you know, his friend's coming. Thought maybe I'd have just enough frames to recover to be able to roll right then, but I didn't. Man, I wish you'd fucking turn all the way around when you go to do that R2, like all the enemies are allowed to do. Then fucking skeletons in 4 1, they could somehow attack in all directions simultaneously. Yes, sir. The good times. Once the second one shows up, that's when you officially know that Miyazaki hates you. The only thing you could do is use the Brazier here to like try and block one of them away from you. 
while you've deep the other one down. Alright, we're gonna just have to go neck bones on this fucking thing and try to get rid of him so that we can just fight him, but no. His friend decided that couldn't be allowed to happen. Fucking shit heal fucking in. I don't know which one of you is we Okay, you're the one. Okay, thank Christ. We stand a chance now that I've only got to fight one of these fucking things. His ass... Did they change some behavior about the way these fucking ass snakes work? Because I don't remember them being this helpful in the original. Of course, I was probably always having too fucking great a time to notice what was going on. I'll stand here and get, <laughs> and get HP back. I don't give a shit. If Miyazaki's going to make this horseshit boss fight, then I'm going to fucking cheese it. In the original, you could actually find a spot to stand outside the arena and shoot them with arrows. I'm going to assume uh, Blue Point didn't keep that in the game. I mean, there's a hundred other fucking bugs in the game, but they didn't keep that one. Come the fuck on. Man. Come the fuck on. Are you trying? Is this some sort of intimidation tactic you're doing? Like, what the hell is happening? He's waiting for me to die of old age in real life. He's trying to kill me like the fucking end in Metal Gear Solid 3. Well. Somehow managed to get out of the way in time. Damn! That fucking thing needs to calm down. Don't know where it is. Do you think maybe I'll be allowed to fight the boss at some point? Or does Miyazaki just somehow earn... He earns royalties for every fucking second of my life this thing wastes. It's like that movie where everyone has like their time written on their arm of how long they're going to be alive, and that's like the currency. I couldn't tell you what it's called, and I've never seen it because it seemed like a trash fucking movie. But the, the premise of it was gimmicky enough that I remembered it for just this moment. Miyazaki's stealing my fucking youth from me. I'm his portrait of Dorian Gray. That's going to be the name of my autobiography. The portrait if he had Taka Miyazaki. I'm going to go for the double. Mark Rutsu, give me strength. No, Mark Rutsu, save me. I got greedy. I guess I can grab my souls on here. Good for me. Well, what do you want to do, buddy? Woohoo! I can't believe I didn't get hit right there. Let's go back to the middle. Doesn't that sound fun? You can do your little flying animation that you love to do all day. And then maybe we can get on with our fucking lives and I can keep fighting you. Still more fight. We gotta try to cheese him through the brazier, son. Every time the camera jumps like that, I'm fucking terrified that I'm about to get knocked off this fucking ledge. Because it could happen at any fucking second. Just because his friend's dead and his HP's that low doesn't mean we're in the fucking clear, voice. Gravity. Sandra Bullock herself will come drag us down into hell like Lisa at the end of Silent Hill with Dr. Kaufman. Come on, sweetheart, buddy. Get down here. Two R1s is all we fucking need to put him in his grave. But I'm not going to fucking get greedy. I'm going to fight him when I want to fight him. And I want to fight him here in the middle. No, you have to come over here. Do an attack so I can kill you. Boom. See, even knowing exactly how to beat him and planning everything in advance. Oh no, the scenario I foretold. The gnat fart of HP. It's real. Take that ring off. Do good damage. Ha ha! Oh no. He had two gnat farts of HP. I never suspected. Oh god almighty, will you make a fucking decision on what you're gonna do? Get smoked, idiot!
You may have wondered why I pointed skyward instead of down when I yelled get smoke. And it's clearly because since those things were demons and they'd love to be sent to hell, I sent them to heaven out of spite. It's like Deborah in Dragon Ball Z. Isn't there like anime filler where he runs into like Videl, Bulma, and Chi Chi in the afterlife because spoilers, boo, blew up the whole fucking planet? Or did I imagine that? Was that just in my fan fictions?